Hello and welcome to today's topic, Candidiasis. Candidiasis is the most common fungal disease in humans affecting skin, mucosa and various other internal organs. It is caused by Candida, a yeast-like fungus that produces pseudohyphae. There are various species of Candida. Among them, Candida albicans is the most common and the most pathogenic species infecting humans. Other Candida species include the Tropicalis, Glabrata, Cruse, Parapsilosis, Dubliensis, Caifre, Glurmondi, and the Vishwanati. Looking into the pathogenesis, Candidiasis is worldwide in distribution. It accounts for the most common fungal infection in humans, both in HIV and non-HIV infected people. Predisposing factors or factors associated with increased risk of infection with Candida include the physiological state, that is the extremes of age, infancy and old age, pregnancy, low immunity, Patients on steroids or immunosuppressive drugs, post-transplantation, malignancy, and HIV-infected people. Patients on broad-spectrum antibiotics. These suppresses the normal flora. And other factors include diabetes mellitus, febrile neutropenia, and the zinc or iron deficiency. Virulence factors that contribute to the pathogenesis are the adhesins that help in adhesion to the skin and mucosa, enzymes such as aspartyl proteinases and the serine proteinases that help in tissue activation, toxins, the glycoprotein extracts of the candida wall are pyrogenic similar to the bacterial endotoxins. Pseudohyphae. Presence of pseudohyphae indicates active infection. Phospholipase released from the hyphal tip may help in invasion. It's not proved yet. Candida albicans has a unique ability to transform frequently between three phenotypic forms in the tissue East form that is the blastospores, pseudohyphae, and a true hyphae. This property is known as phenotypic switching, that is the phenotypic dimorphism. This enables adaptation to changing conditions in host and thereby assist the fungus in evading host defense system. Seeing the clinical manifestations, Candida species produce a spectrum of infections ranging from skin and mucosal to invasive and allergic infections. Mucosal Candidiasis is exhibited as oropharyngeal candidiasis or the oral crush. It presents as white adherent painless patches in the mouth. Candidal vulvo vaginitis is characterized by pruritus pain and vaginal discharge which is usually thin. Sometimes it may become whitish curd in severe cases. Belanitis and the belanopositis. Esophageal candidiasis angular stomatitis and the denture stomatitis, chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. These features may be seen in infants and children in, with deficient cell-mediated immunity as a T-cell defect. Cutaneous candidiasis is exhibited as the intertigo characterized by erythema and pustules in the skin folds associated with tight fitting undergarments and sweating. Peronchia involving the nail skin interface and the oncomycosis, the fungal infection of the nail. Diapocandidiasis. Pustular rashes associated with 
use of diapers in infants. Perianal candidiasis. Erosio interdigitalis blastomycetia is an infection affecting the web spaces of the hands and toes. Invasive candidiasis results from hematogenous or local spread of the fungi. Various forms of invasive candidiasis include urinary tract infection, pulmonary candidiasis, septicemia caused by candida albicans and the glabrata, arthritis and the osteomyelitis, meningitis, ocular keratoconjunctivitis and the endophthalmitis. Hepatosplenic candidiasis, disseminated candidiasis and the nosocomial candidiasis caused by the candida glabrata. Allergic candidiasis is exhibited as a candidate is and this is an allergic reaction to the metabolites of candida characterized by the vesicular lesions in the web spaces of the hands and other areas similar to that of the dermatophyted reaction. Other allergic reactions include the gastritis, irritable bowel syndrome and the eczema. Let's see the laboratory diagnosis for candidiasis. Specimen collection. Depending on the site of infection, various specimens are collected such as whitish mucosal patches, skin and nail scrapings, sputum, urine or blood. Direct microscopy. Gram staining reveals gram positive oval budding E cells 4 to 6 micrometer in size with pseudo hyphae. Culture. Specimens can be inoculated into the SDA medium, the Saburan dextrose agar, with antibiotic supplements and then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius. Candida can also grow in bacteriological culture media such as blood agar. Blood for culture can be inoculated into blood culture bottles. The colonies appear in one to two days and are described as creamy white, smooth and pasty with typical yeasty order. Gram staining of the colonies show gram positive budding yeast cells with pseudo hyphae except for the C. glabretta which does not show pseudo hyphae. Test for species identification. Germ tube test is a specific test for the Candida albicans. This is also known as the Reynolds broad phenomenon. Colonies here are mixed up with human or sheep serum and incubated for two hours. Wet mount preparation is examined under microscope. Germ cubes are formed described as long tube-like projections extending from the E cells. It is differentiated from the pseudo hyphae as there is no constriction at the origin. Though the test is specific for Candida albicans, it may also be positive for the Candida dubliensis. Other tests include the Dalmo plate culture. The culture on cornmeal agar can provide clue for species identification. Candida albicans produces thick-walled chlamydiospores. The chrome agar Different candida species produce different colored colonies and chromagar. Growth at 45 degrees centigrade. It differentiates candida albicans from candida dubliensis. Here candida dubliensis does not grow while candida albicans grows. Sugar fermentation test and the sugar assimilation test can differentiate between various species of candida. Molecular methods include PCR, 
using species specific primers that are useful for the species identification. Immunodiagnosis, antibody detection, various formats like ELISA, latex agglutination tests are available for detecting serum antibodies against the cell wall mannan antigen. Antigen detection, candida specific antigen such as the cell wall mannan and the cytoplasmic antigens can be detected by the ELISA. Enzyme detection, assays are available to detect enzymes specific for candida such as the enolase, aspartate, proteinases and etc. Test for metabolites. Specific metabolites of candida such as mannitol and arabinitol can be detected. The G test is done for the detection of alpha 1,3 glucan. The treatment for candidiasis depends on the type of candidiasis. Topical azole is used in cutaneous candidiasis or oral thrush. Oral fluconazole is used in esophageal and the vulvovaginal candidiasis. Amphotericin B is used in disseminated candidiasis. To conclude, stay clean, stay safe and stay home. Get good sleep, eat clean, drink water, exercise and repeat. Thank you.